Throughout history, presidents and political leaders have inspired us with bold and innovative ideas that have shaped the world we live in. These are not, however, among them. Here are six terrible presidential ideas. Number six, Nikolai Ceausescu's austerity policy. The austerity measures implemented by Romanian President Nikolai Ceausescu in the 1980s in an effort to pay out the state's foreign debt represented the beginning of his downfall. Infrastructure was left to decay and even basic necessities such as food, electricity, heating, and medical care were rationed. Prices on goods and services previously stable were gradually increased. The price for energy use, despite being restricted, was also increased. Increased. Between 1980 and 1985, spending cuts were applied to virtually every aspect of the state's social functions. Healthcare cuts led to one of the highest infant mortality rates in Europe. Hypodermic needles were being reused in hospitals, which caused an increase in the spreading of disease, such as AIDS. As Romanian agriculture lacked a sufficient labor force, millions of university students and school children were taken to work in the fields. Ceausescu introduced a rational eating program under the claim that Romanians were eating too much and that it was a plan to reduce their calorie intake. Cooking oil, bread, meat, milk, and sugar were rationed. Winters became unbearable as district heating and electricity were often stopped in an effort to save energy. In most apartments, hot water was reduced to one day per week. In 1985, dozens of babies in neonatal intensive care units died when their incubators were shut down by the power cuts to conserve energy. All regional radio stations were shut down and television stations broadcasted a single channel for just two or three hours a day. The austerity policy was a terrible idea, which along with the political repression that plagued the country throughout Ceausescu's regime, led to the 1989 revolution. It meant the end of the communist regime, culminating with the execution of Nikolai Ceausescu and his wife Elena on the 25th of December 1989 after a show trial. Number 5. Mao Zedong's Great Leap Forward the Great Leap Forward was a campaign undertaken by Chinese communists led by Chairman Mao Zedong to organize its vast population to meet China's agricultural and industrial problems. Taking place between 1958 and 1960, particularly in China's rural communities, the industrialization was labor-intensive, focusing on manpower rather than capital expenditure and machinery. Implementing the Great Leap Forward resulted in the failure of the Soviet model of industrialization in China. One of the main concepts was to convert the money accumulated from the sale of agricultural products into heavy machinery. Unfortunately, China's dense population left no agricultural surplus to be converted into capital, and the leadership soon realized that agriculture and industry could develop simultaneously through reliance on labor and by changing people's working habits. The experimental community system first established in Ernan province in 1958 quickly spread across the country, but without careful planning, poor farmers were forced to set up backyard furnaces with in adequate tools. This large-scale diversion of farm labor into small-scale industry put severe strain on China's agriculture. The inefficiency of the communities, along with the withdrawal of Soviet support and three consecutive years of natural calamities, amounted to a national disaster. An estimated 20 million people died of starvation between 1959 and 1962. By early 1960, the Great Leap Forward program was repealed. Number 4. Nicolas Maduro's ban on protests. When Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro was anointed by Hugo Chavez as his successor, few would have suspected the former bus driver was fast on the way to becoming a dictator. Venezuela is currently riddled by rampant crime, power cuts, hyperinflation, and shortages of medicine, food, and other goods. Despite the fact that the country has larger oil supplies than Saudi Arabia, its economy is crumbling. Colombia is reportedly bracing itself for a wave of Venezuelans fleeing desperation and hunger. After four months of protests and violence that claimed over 100 lives and sent thousands to prison, it was one of Maduro's most recent decisions that led the opposition to fear the end of democracy. Maduro decided to hold an election for a constituent assembly that would have the power to dissolve state institutions and rewrite the constitution. The opposition called for more protests as well as a general strike. A 
flashpoint that had been brewing for years was Maduro's decision to mobilize 370,000 troops and establish a ban on public protests with jail terms of up to 10 years. With Maduro's failure to continue Chavez's socialist ideals, many see the country as teetering on the edge. But for Maduro, a loss of power could also mean a loss of life. Number 3. Rodrigo Duterte's War on Drugs Philippines President Rodrigo Duterte's war has been regarded by many as a good idea, applied in a terrible manner. Nicknamed the Punisher by his supporters, Duterte promised to put what he refers to as drug personalities in funeral parlors and not the prisons. Thousands have been killed so far by his death squads, often without due process or under unexplained circumstances. The 16th of August 2017 was the bloodiest night of his war on drugs. Several raids took place in in the Bulacan province near Manila, 32 drug personalities were killed and more than 100 others taken into custody. The operation was praised by Duterte, who encouraged law enforcement to reproduce the number of casualties on a daily basis. Duterte claimed that he would personally kill criminals during his term as mayor of Davao and that on one occasion had thrown a suspect out of a helicopter. Despite police claims that deaths have occurred during shootouts, human rights groups believe that suspects were executed. Other accusations, including those from the president's political oppositions, were centered on police abuse, human rights violations, and on Duterte using the war on drugs as an umbrella concept to justify killing whomever he desired. Domestically, Duterte remains popular and has frequently lashed out against international criticism. He warned the EU not to get involved, called former US President Barack Obama a son of a whore, a term which he also used when speaking about the Pope. And as for the human rights groups criticizing his methods, he said, if they are obstructing justice, shoot. Donald Trump has commended the Philippine president for doing an unbelievable job in his anti-narcotics campaign. Number 2. Bashir al-Assad's war on his own people over 320,000 people and counting have been killed in Syria since the conflict began in March 2011. Throughout six years of war, President Bashir al-Assad has overseen a deadly campaign that's brought tragedy into the lives of thousands of Syrians. Assad and his allies have allegedly engaged in tactics that contradict the norms of modern warfare. Several reports have found his government guilty of war crimes and crimes against humanity. Hundreds of people were killed in 2013 in the suburbs of Damascus after a nerve gas attack. International pressures led to him agreeing to destroy his stockpile of chemical weapons, but since then, chlorine has been used in attacks. On the 4th of April 2017, another chemical attack killed 86 people, 27 of whom were children. More than 13,000 barrel bombs were dropped in 2016. Mosques, markets, schools, and around 300 hospitals have been hit. According to Amnesty International, the devastation brought on by the civil war has displaced nearly half of the country's pre-war population. Many analysts believe that Assad's fear of losing power is a contributing factor to the growing severity of the war. Number 1. Trump's Border Wall Throughout his 2016 presidential campaign, Donald Trump told supporters of his idea, which would later become a pillar of his campaign. He said that he was going to build a great wall along the 1,900-mile Mexico-US border, and he guaranteed that Mexico would pay for it. The main objective of the wall, as Trump described, is to restrict illegal immigration into the US. When Mexico sends its people, they're not sending their best. They're sending people that have lots of problems, and they're bringing those problems to us. They're bringing drugs, they're bringing crime, they're rapists, and some, I assume, are good people. These remarks made during Trump's presidential campaign caused public outcry. A response from Mexico's interior minister, Miguel Hanguel Osario Chong, called them prejudicial and absurd. Despite the strong reactions to Trump's statements, the wall speech became the part of his campaign that rallied his supporters the most. In January 2017, President Trump signed an executive order to start building the wall, which according to him would cover 1,000 miles of the border, with the rest of it being protected by natural obstacles. Since it was first proposed, Mr. Trump's wall has been debated and analyzed by experts from multiple fields, the majority concluding that it would be a terrible idea. Aside from 
from the building costs, which were far greater than initially planned, with some estimates placing it as high as $25 billion. There's maintenance costs of around $700 million a year. Mexican President Enrique Peña Nieto has excluded the possibility that Mexico would pay for the war, and former leaders have compared the US President's rhetoric to that of Hitler or Mussolini. Mexicans and many people around the world see the idea of building a wall, accompanied by Trump's remarks as racist and xenophobic. Others have called it an oversimplified solution to a complex problem. Despite numerous reassurances from President Trump, the general consensus is that the idea of an impenetrable wall is absurd and that it wouldn't solve the immigration or drug problem. There's always methods of circumventing the obstacle, according to Thad Bingle, a former senior U.S. Customs and Border Protection officer. Aside from the length and height of the wall, which have been under debate for some time, there's also the question of what building the wall would mean for the federally protected and endangered species currently living along the border. The project's still in development and certain aspects of it may eventually improve, but for the time being, it's hard not to view Trump's wall as a terrible presidential idea appeared on the internet. The most famous of these was the story about a giant human skeleton uncovered in the desert during gas exploration in Saudi Arabia. Pictures were included, linked with the Islamic story of the Prophet Hud and the powerful giant tribe of Ad. 